This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Vegas is on vacation and should be returning in the morning to the chat. So we sure do miss her. And I've been doing these solo on my own. Today's date is December the 17th, 2018. And right off the bat, I want to talk about one that's been giving some people some headaches. But yet, we've been still semi-bullish on it. Today it came out with some good news, and that's OMED after hours. Institutional buyers are wanting to get into this trade. You see the stock running after hours. We had a low here of 68, and we ran all the way up to 83 after hours. So if anybody's in this, take some profit right now. It's going to pull back. It'd be nice to do that. And then just remember the support levels, and I'm going to show you the uh, 13D institutional investors are getting in this thing why it's cheap so they know something that's going on they know it's hit a low hit a bottom so I'm gonna pull this chart back up and I'm gonna look at the yearly chart just to get a south fast glance at it and look at that I mean this thing was at four dollars and twenty cents last January and we've dipped all the way down to 68 65 53 today we just had a bounce up to 83 cents after hours, so it took a pretty hard sell off from, oh, I would almost say, I would almost call this a pivot point right around 259, 260, but maybe I, I would probably, 239, 240 would be a little, somewhere around there. So it's dropped down to 68 cents, 65.53, and now we're bounced up 83, and we have a little bit of selling off going on right now. So I've got this charted up pretty good. I got the next resistance at 84 and then 87. So expect to pull back to support level. And I'm going to draw that in right here around 75, 88. I need to change a tool. Um, where is it? There it is. 85. What did I say earlier? Let's just make it 76. 75 to 76 cents. I like to see it pull back, or it could pull back here to the 50 SMA and bounce off these moving averages. I have the 50, the 100, and the 200. So definitely keep this on watch. It had the 13D come out, and we have insider buying, institutional buying going on. And then the next one I want to call out here is InBev. InBev. I love this stock. I mean, I. It, has, it's, it just gets good news, good news constantly. It's got a, I mean, it's expanding worldwide. It's got a bunch of cool drinks on here that I'm going to soon, soon buy me a case of them if I can ever find them. It's got the Marley brand, you know, some of these teas. They're talking about infusion it with, with, with marijuana. They sell water. I mean, it's just a, all good all-around stock that's really expanding very well. I hope it don't expand too fast, but it's definitely been bullish. And I've been on this stock ever from day one. And I'm going to type that in the window right here and show you the yearly chart. See what I'm looking at and what I saw today. Here's another play that you could have probably got at least more than 10 shots on it. And it ran from yesterday. It had a low yesterday or Friday at 536. And today we hit a resistance level up here around 76, 77. And I had a 78. 78 resistance on this. We passed, broke past this 656 error right here. Okay. At 655. So I'm very bullish on this stock. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart if I haven't done it already. We were on this from day one when this thing broke out up to Vegas called it out at ten bucks. We hit nine ninety nine. Then we pulled back, had a real hard sell off. I still stayed bullish in this. We called support last time right around it was really low threes. And here we are battling up here around a pivot point of this big breakout. So always expect a pullback on this stock. Now I'm gonna show you how beautiful this was today to trade. And it was just just a, a marvelous trade today. And we bounced up, and I knew it was bullish. I talked about it 
in the aftermarket report Sunday. I said exactly what it was going to do. It pulled back, then it bounced up, and it fell in love. We had a golden cross. Then it fell in love with the 50 SMA all the way up. Then we broke out and hit this high right here of around 665. I'm not going to say 6. Then we pulled back and we hit the 50 again and snuggled on the 50 and then said I didn't want to stay there and hit the 100. Bounced back up to that 656 again. And then we had another sell-off. I saw this death wish cross. Uh, it's called a uh, bearish golden cross. So when that crosses down over the, the 100 here, and then when it crossed over the 200, I knew it was, and I got out of it. You know, I was telling people to exit when I saw the weakness performing. Then once I said, give it a rest. Let's see if we can form some kind of flag. Well, we did. We formed a flag right here, and I called this breakout. Right when I was drawing this flag, all of a sudden it broke out. Broke out, and we had again the golden cross. And I, and I I let everybody in the room, you know, I, I gave them a good lesson today of what the Golden Cross meant. And I showed them two different ways of playing this sucker. But here we are again with another Golden Cross, and look at the bounce we had from that Golden Cross here at 638. Ran all the way up to 70. That's a 40 cent bounce. Then here we go. We test that 50 again. We bounce up. Then we come back and we test the 200. We bounce up and hit the 50. We go back and we test the 200 again, and we bounce up and break the 50, and we broke the top. I called the, the breakout on this, and we run it up to all the way to 677, and here we are pulling back a little bit after hours. Keep this, this is probably due for another good pullback, not a long one, but this thing is very bullish. I am so excited to see what this brings in the year of 2019, and that's InBev. And then I'm going to mention Cron. Cron's my favorite too. And I just have to keep repeating these because they're just so easy to play. So easy. And I'm going to show you something about the Death Wish or the Golden Crosses. See, so we had a Golden Cross here, then we had a Bearish Cross. We, we, after, after hours yesterday, we had another Golden. It touched up against the 100, and we had the biggest breakout that you could possibly believe. And I called this pullback. And then look, it bounced all the way up to resistance level here. Back up here at 1170 something. I mean, just perfect and stopped. History always repeats itself. Always. And they always pull back. And sometimes these suckers can pull back seven times faster than they can go up. So here we had the death wish here. And it decided to go ahead and sell off. And here we alerted it again. I said, here we are, back to 11 bucks again, and I've been on this $11 for, for quite a while. So Cron is one of my favorites. I love to play the pullbacks, keep it on watch, look for the golden crosses, look for the bullish and bearish ones, and you'll have your nice little play. But I'm very bullish into the, into the next year with this one, too. There's only, it's, it's going to be like the car industry. You know, you're going to have all these companies coming out, but there's only going to be like four or five great leaders. And those are the ones you want to follow. And right now I'm defining them down. I've got InBev and I've got Cron on top of my list. And I want to keep adding two of them. And this is going to be a solid watch list for next year to be playing these dips. So we've got, and then I'm going to go ahead and throw hemp in here. The farm bill really give it another boost to all these stocks. And I'm, I'm very bullish on hemp. I called, called it down here at the bottom, and when the farm bill came out, we got a 100% gain on it. And I called it to 5 cents, and I'm going to pull this 5-day chart up and show you what I'm talking about. We got in down here around 3-something, and I sold it, and I just following it up with the SMA here we are with a another death cross got the 50 crossing down and I, when I see any sign of weakness I'm out I'm out but I ran this all the way up to almost five cents and I called this five cents at three and I was kind of mocked and laughed at but they've got it they've merged with another company that that's going to supply them with all the hemp that they need 
to do what they got to do to make their business grow. So I'm, I'm, I'm back in the bullish pattern with this stock, and a lot of people got burnt on hemp. This thing's been around forever. And I started playing these 10 years ago, about the time President Obama was elected. And it ran, the, these stocks ran for a couple months, and then they all tanked, and they never did recover. But the news keeps piling up, and the legalization keeps piling up, and all these other countries are 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 getting involved and their worst enemy right now is probably the pharmaceutical companies so you're going to keep having these fat cats on wall street bashing this industry and i'm telling you it's going to be like the dot com era because i i have personally have epilepsy and it's changed my life and i you know they told me i was going to die when i was 20 but yet, they, they just fed me up with a bunch of pills, and I slept all day. And I, I just had to get away from that. And so at a very young age, I started smoking pot. And it, 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 what it done is it, it kept me from having grand mal epilepsy. I had petty mal, and then I had grand mal, and now I just have metabolic, where I'm having them in my brain every three minutes, but they're not physically have me going into convulsions or or blacking out and i believe with the 40 years that i've been doing this that it it has cured me from epilepsy i truly believe that so this is hemp keep it on watch farm bills affected a lot of these penny stocks i alerted that on the aftermarket report on sunday and they're just they're just still bouncing and looking good and then i'm going to add two more to my watch list and that's going to be dffn and uxin and i'm going to go ahead and put this dff in right now these are the two stocks that i played today they had a split on this one so this thing's you know run up it's a low floater now it's a low float stock. I think what's going to happen with this, it's going to bounce around. Then today we had the big, beautiful play. And I'm going to, and I called this out in the room this morning when I started seeing it running. But this wasn't the first one I hit. This was the second one that I played around with. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a daily chart. We had a little breakout this morning, and I flipped it a couple times as it was going up, and that was about it. So we've pulled back to 265. I want to keep this one on watch for tomorrow and see if we can keep this support. If we can, we can get a bounce up. If not, it's going to pull back. So this is kind of a risky play, but I'm going to definitely have it on watch. And then I alerted in the aftermarket report, this stock here, UXIN. I really liked the way this one's playing. This is a China car play. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post the chart. This was a beautiful play today, too. And I'm still bullish on it. But I always say, don't chase these stocks. Try to find, try to get in at the support. I had a 793 resistance on this uh, Friday. So I drew that hard line resistance and we pulled back. And then after the aftermarket report, I said we might pull back a little bit more on Sunday. Then we're going to have a pretty good little bounce. Well, that's exactly what it did. It, I didn't know where it was going to pull back to, but I knew it was going to pull back. And when it did pull back, it pulled back right to 7 bucks. And I think I might have called this. Yes, I did. Yes, I did call this. And, I'll, and, and I, in fact, I know I did. I called a $7 support. You can go back and chime in on Sunday's report. Well, it, it pulled back to that 7 I had... And the thing bounced all the way up to resistance here. Then we created a triple top. And we weren't able to break that triple top. But that triple top from 7 bucks to 848 in a matter of, of less than an hour. I was telling everybody in the room, I could be, I, I could go ahead and head on home, man. I'm done for the day. And, but I just want to stick around and, and talk stocks. 
So we hit that resistance. I'm definitely keep this stock on watch. UXIN, any kind of pullback, if it hits the 793 level, is going to be your solid support. And that was yesterday, Friday's resistance. And we came back and we touched that 793 after the breakout of 848. Tells you how, how important it is to look back at history on these charts. A lot of traders just go to a chart daily and that's it. They don't they don't go back and look at the history of the of the chart. And the first thing I look at is yearly daily. Then I'll cut them on and bring them on down. But I can look at that yearly daily and it will tell me if I want to mess with this thing or not. If I'm in a bottom play or or if it's too high, too much of a resistance and I gotta play a pullback. If we're at a pivot point on a year, it can tell me all this stuff within 15 seconds. I've got it already figured out. So keep this thing on watch. If we can get a triple bottom, touch down here at 793 and hold, we're going to bounce back up to resistance at 835. And then we need to break. As I said, we need to break this 747. 847. So that's the aftermarket report. We talked a little bit about the farm bill and how it's affected some of these stocks. It's just another catalyst. And we just get catalysts every day in another country wanting to get involved in it. And this could be a new revenue stream for a lot of, even the United States government starting to get their fingers into it. Because they got the farm bill and they know they'll get revenue out of that farm bill. So we got InBev, Cron, Hemp, OMED with that 13D filing bouncing up after hours. DFFN, we're just going to put it on watch. We're going to see if we can play a pullback on it. And UXIN, I'm very bullish on this stock too. I always, I, I never jump in a stock. You hear me call it all the time. I don't get into a stock unless I see a pullback. And that's just a fact, Jack. So... This is the aftermarket report. Vegas will be back with me tomorrow, hopefully, and we'll get things rolling again. I sure do miss her. She's the upper half of my best half, and that's the brains. So everybody have a great day. This is December 17th, 2018, and I want to give special kudos out to the room that I'm in. I really appreciate everybody that's in there. And I hope I'm helping them out as much as they're helping me. Every time they ask me a question, I learn something new. And every week, I always have a case study. And I always talk about patterns, chart patterns. Just I'm always bringing up something educational in the room that could help somebody out. And I always like to repeat stuff because I, I felt, I feel like some people get a little complacent and if you keep reminding someone something they start picking up that habit and it usually takes 28 times to form a habit so this is wash without vegas and next time i'm on here i hope i have her with me and this is the aftermarket report and everybody have a great day be sure to subscribe and ring that bell and get our updates because we'll be doing this coming very definitely with the new year coming it's going to be an everyday thing we're off on fridays but we do the big report on sunday like i said merry christmas to all of you i love stocks okay.